probably be good. Well, hello. Welcome to the April Fool's edition of Dungeons and Dragons. Pathfinder Asian Court Intrigue edition. Today, we are going to be taking a small break from what we usually do. Everyone's care, we're going to have a series of small little vignettes where everyone explores a pointless hobby that their character has. Be it folding cranes, building sandcastles, and then kicking them over, or some other event. So, I uh, will first go with Frosty. You have 20 minutes. <laughs> what do you do for uselessly for then? Oh, 20 oh, minutes no. real time. We can cram in as much as we can. Onan likes to research flowers and then scoff at them because they're not as good as the ones she's going to make with a hammer and metal. And uh, That's really good. That's her hobby. <laughs> her hobby is finding things in nature, mocking them and building a better version. That is exactly correct, yes. That actually makes so much sense. Okay. Well, uh, you know, actually, now the, on second thought, that's a stupid idea to run a session <laughs> on. Why don't we go back to what we're going to do? Oh, man. So, I know, I know, okay. So, last time you guys met with Sarajin, the Sarajin the Eternal, a Samsaran who's been marching through history fighting the Phoenix Cult. He actually does look at the ice weapons that you've made because you guys armed yourself with some of the ice weapons. The, like, holy water ice weapons. And started slaying... slaying and relieving the curse from a few of the people. and A few of the phoenix-cursed people. And he was rather impressed at your thought of... Well, finding a way of bringing the water and keeping its potency. Now, you guys do have like a day and a half before the auction, in which the pearl, the celestial pearl of serenity, will be auctioned off. You guys will likely be able to get in on, in the auction if you either go as the voices representative. Or if you scrounge up enough net worth worth of stuff to convince the auction organizers that you would actually be a serious contender in buying stuff. Can, does the auction allow the trading of other goods? Uh, yeah. The auction definitely would. If you guys came and said, hey, we have this lost piece of Talmex outfit. They would probably be like, okay, that's worthy that's worthy of a bid. Let us do some figuring out onto what the bit what the lowest bid value of that would be, and they would go from there. So you it's not like you guys don't have the net worth to put up quote unquote collateral to make a bid, or at least be there when a bid is made. You imagine, however, there are going to be groups and individuals that really will want that. Well, they'll want that pearl. And you already have a pearl that you don't want to trade for it. <laughs> Unless the Serenity one's really good. I don't know what it does, so. I mean, it's probably pretty good. Probably. But you have to decide if it's better than the Pearl of Luck. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't even know the mechanics behind it, and you're saying no. That that That's fine. So what are you guys going to do in your two, two-ish days? Craft. We're we not going to try to... Well, you guys are to... currently out on a volcano. I guess go home. With Sergeant. Okay, so... <laughs> oh, wait, no. the... We need to bond with Sergeant a bit. You know, just rub some elbows. Like it's weird when you people come up to someone and just start rubbing their elbows. <laughs> You're like, hey, let's rub some elbows. I mean, talk. the prince does that a lot, and people never complain again. <laughs> That's because the prince is kind of monstrous. <laughs> Only a little bit. Only a little bit? Only a little bit. I mean, 
Has he ever used it for terrible means? Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> All a matter of perspective. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's move on. <clears throat> so do we have to like are we gonna have some scenes where we're becoming friends with Sarajan? She has some smiles, she has some laughs. Just some tears, you know. Or is that going to be washed away, or I don't know. It's, it's a plan. Well, between your bird, uh, between the bird Onan's, I don't you have knowledge in knowledge engineering? Oh yes, and a whole lot of spells for moving stuff. And uh, a liar of building, you should actually be able to shore up the defenses in a stupidly quick amount of time. Can we have him yeah. roll to see how many consecutive uh, uses he gets out of that? Because the liar building isn't infinite. It's until you fuck up the, the perform roll. And that's if we want to use it right here. It seems like a good place. It seems like it? a really good time. Uh, I think my... Hmm. Like what's the base? What's the base you need to? Uh, uh, you have to do a DC eighteen. And what's your perform? Perform oh, I percussion in this. Cannot fail that. Yeah, but exhaustion will eventually take you. So how long until he gets exhausted to the point where he has to actually start rolling? Okay, so <laughs> each hour after the first, you must make a perform check. Uh, I'm going to say for the sake of these things not being used infinitely by sufficiently skilled musicians. <laughs> that for every hour after the first, you get a minus one on the check due to exhaustion. Or maybe even a minus two. Uh, what is what is your constitution modifier there, TMS? My constitution modifier is plus four. Okay. So actually, I say you can probably play for five hours before any exhaustion effects would step step in. Okay. Wow. And then I'm going to say it's minus two for every hour after after that. So don't much? bother rolling for the first five for the first six hours. What's your bonus? Plus twenty-seven. Plus twenty-seven DC is eighteen. 18. Okay. So don't bother rolling for the first 11 hours. True enough. Yeah. And then you'll start having a chance of failure. Time to spam yeah. roll. Spam. I okay, just, so I just, just need to away. figure out the base DC. So after... So five... Uh, so five hours minus 11 is six hours. So six is minus 12. So do a perform check minus 14 for the 12th hour. Okay. So roll one. Roll. Okay. Is that the sound of the drum? Yes, that's the sound of the drum. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I will... Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, then do a check minus 16 for the next hour. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, well. That's okay. still a lot. <laughs> yeah. You so like got 12 hours. 12 hours worth of work. Which is... Each, uh, each 30 minutes of playing is equal to 100 human beings laboring for three days. Because this is in... In the realm of GM Fiat, so 12 times 2 is 24, times 3 
is 72 days Holy worth shit. of 100 humans laboring. Is, I basically just build a castle. 7,200 man hours. Yeah, well, build a city. we're trying to seal them in, right? <laughs> Wouldn't you build? You're, a... you're trying to create a wall to build that wall. <laughs> uh, you're, you're trying to build a way for the defenders to oh, like. You could build like a wall, and with the materials from in front of it, make a pit with spikes and shit. Because these are mindless. Yeah, a pit of these, volcanic, these... Sp a volcanic like obsidian spikes. Yeah, these things are mindless. They don't know, but they'll just walk and fall and get stuck there until we stab them. They're not quite zombies. They're close They're enough. They little... scream and you know, a run little at us. unstable. Well, then, you know. Some are way more unstable than others. Yes. We just have to make sure that they can't climb. Pretty much, yeah. And some of them could cast spells. Oh yeah. That's yeah, true. some of them can cast spells, but effectively, you're just trying to make it easier for the. Uh, also, I will need Frosty to roll a knowledge or a knowledge engineering check yep. to see how well you direct TMOs in making fortifications and redirecting okay. lava rivers and whatnot. All right. Left roll. I assume you have the plus two from heightened awareness, which I'm sure you can. Oh, yeah. So let me call that 24 or 25. 25, okay. You know how to you know how to build basic fortifications, a interface of an interfacing moat, ways of creating arrow slits. It's actually quite a good stone and obsidian and lava based kind of fortress ring you've <laughs> created around the volcano. Goddamn liar building's good. Yeah. Especially, uh, yep. Effect, you make it out of the volcano landscape itself. Sweet. So that you can't use any wood, you can't really use any stone that isn't, you know, part of the mountain. But your liar building creates. Oh. It creates a, a fortress. Sergin okay. looks impressed, especially because you did that for like 12 hours straight. <laughs> as well as being directed and having the bird scout things out. Other people in the party could have helped, but no one else, uh, like, can have helped. But effectively, the liar of building did most of it here. Sergin is pleased, as much as you can tell his expression, based on <laughs> seeing how it's covered in a full plate helmet. And the defenders, the the army that was sent to defend this, is very relieved to have more fortifications and more place, more space and defense between them and the exploding crazies coming out of the volcano. Understandable. Yeah. Yeah. So effectively, you now have like. A few, a small rest period and a day before the auction. Do you do you want to go back to the capital and start preparing? Uh, will you? Yeah, and you also have to think about how you're going to go into get into the auction. It's not it's not impossible, you just have to say the angle at which you're doing so. So we want that pearl because we're greedy. Also it's powerful. Actually, uh, people can roll in knowledge arcana or a knowledge history, whatever they have higher. Oh boy. Uh, I'm gonna say history. Hey, that's not bad. Oh. Knowledge history or knowledge arcana? I'm gonna roll just. Give me a second. Okay, cool. No worries. Well, 
We'll see if uh, people just start getting failed. Okay. That was supposed to be plus seven. Hmm. Not zero. I'm seeing a plus 17, Lauren. Okay. I don't know what I did then. Uh, and Chelsea, was that history or arcana? Arcana. Okay. Awesome. So. You, uh, for Matt, you know that the pearls are generally, like in legend and myth, associated with powerful dragons. It might be the pillars, it might not be, but you don't know exactly why they were scattered. Mm -hmm. As best you can understand is that maybe they were scattered before the current pillars became the pillars. They were scattered thousands of years ago. And occasionally a pearl pops up, is fought over, and then disappears. Usually in the chaos of who, whichever new owner has it and doesn't want to be murdered over it. Yeah. Uh, you know the Pearl of Serenity is has kept on popping up wherever there are conflict hotspots. It is used to usually used as a almost a brute force mechanism for forcing a truce you don't know exactly how it does it but you're pretty sure it might end hostilities in the area around it cool as for uh lalara you know uh you you know a little bit more about these pearls as you've been doing a bit more of your re own research. And do you know that the Pearl of Serenity is actually associated with the Pillar of the South? In this incarnation, the Anvil. The, pill, uh, the Pearl of Luck is actually associated with Cadalatrix. Hmm. So it appears like, or at least the, it's associated with the Pillar of the North. You don't know if Cadalatrix has ever had this pearl, or if it's just whoever was Cadalatrix's predecessor, as pillars usually, like, they, get, they take the position and then eventually a new pillar comes along and replaces them, either... The old one retires, dies, or gets too bored. And a pillar moves on. So, you imagine the Pearl of Serenity, even if the Anvil never had it herself, she would be interested in, in it, or even knowing who it ended up going to. so that the anvil could find her own ways of getting the her pearl back. It's it's possible that um, the anvil would allow us to use the pearl with the promise that we would give it back to her after we were done with it. Well, the anvil is currently guarding your amulet, so she might not know that the pearl is being traded. No, but we could say we have it. She might be like, oh, that's my pearl here. Scales and tears and blood and whatever. <laughs> and then and then we, we just keep it. So, like, why don't the dragons, why don't the pillars have their pearls? That you don't actually know. Uh, I mean, you could ask a pillar. The answer to that isn't exactly clear in the history we've been reading. Okay. I mean, we have teleport. We're back at the capital, right? Are yep. Uh, that that's an easy teleport for any for the two of you who would have teleport. Okay. And we can go and ask. I can sending the anvil and ask nicely. Okay. What? How exactly are you asking the anvil? Now give me a second to write it up. Thank you. Uh, this one will not start with "Hey, girl." <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Now, maybe the, the anvil has a weakness for flattery. What is the technical full title that the anvil should be addressed at as? 
Like her full name? Or like the full title, like Your Majesty, your... It would be probably like... Uh, l let me actually see what I wrote down. I don't think I wrote down like a huge amount of titles. Nivaka the Anvil. Uh, it would be likely Nivaka the Anvil, Guardian of the South. Nivaka the Anvil, Guardian of the South. Now it sounds more like a prayer. That's good. <laughs> He's going to hear our changing uh, tones and be like, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> what now? <laughs> Is it something to do with the Phoenix cult? Because I'm already handling my part. Randy, yes, can the capital? Will the, will they know if I spell the word serenity wrong? No. Okay. Well, I think I'm I'm so just going to assume that your character your character knows how to spell serenity in whatever language you're currently using. Uh. Okay. If you have tr okay. Draconic, you can do Draconic. You can also do Common, as the Anvil likely knows Common. <laughs> I wonder if the Pillar or an Empire knows Common. Knows the Empire language. You know That would be hilarious if the Anvil didn't. She's like, I'm new to the job, I don't care. <laughs> if they want to speak with me, they should use like a proper language, like Draconic. <laughs> Actually, okay, damn, I'm two words too far. Or just cut other. out some. Okay, cut out some. Cut out some of those unimportant. <laughs> cut out an A or a two or a V. Cut out the important words. Leave those. <laughs> okay, the is in the. Do you know anything about it or have any interest? Yeah, that's good. Just take out all the proper nouns. Yeah. Blank the Anvil, Guardian of the South. Okay. I can skip the the and we're good. <laughs> 25 words. <laughs> oh. Good okay. Blank the Anvil, Guardian of the South. Celestial Pearl Serenity is in the capital. Do you know anything about it or have any interest? Okay. You could have taken out Guardian of the South and added, like, no. it's in an auction. You can't. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. Okay. And we just hear the chewing noises of the anvil. Ow. Um. 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 You get a reply about a minute later. Oh, none. I now know its location, but not who possesses it. I am interested. Meet with Knight Captain... What did I actually put his name as? Chun Long. And I will add resources. 25 words. Okay. Let's go meet Chun Long. <laughs> uh, I guess knowledge nobility. I don't have much of that. Or knowledge local? I have any of that? I'm no knowledge man. Both of them would get that plus five from being evangelist, but that's about it. Or was it plus five or four? Plus four. Huh. Oh yeah. Uh, Lalar is relatively certain that Chen Long is kind of a a permanent ambassador for the Order of the Anvil and that he lives somewhere in the Noble District. Uh, Tiamos knows that he lives in a 
in a small temple devoted to, well, a small pantheon of gods mm. in the Nobel Quarter. You you actually know where it is specifically, so you don't need to ask around. Okay. Are you okay? You're going to meet Chun Chen Long. Yes, also. we do that. Okay, you. You do some reconnaissance in force, as in all of you uh, go to Chunlong. You you find you find it's in a small, st sturdy temple. It almost is like more of a fortified tower than a more regular temple. And as you approach, you see from. From one of the barred doors, a small slit opens. The, a pair of scrutinizing eyes looks out of the slit, and then it closes. And then you hear a voice inside. The anvil told me to expect them. Well, let them in after I ask one question. The slot opens up, and you see, like, a night helm. You can't see the eyes, just it's a helmet. And he says, Greetings, travelers, adventurers. May I ask who you are? My name is Chung Long. Um, master of the small order here. Well, we're friends of the anvil, and also high-ranking officials of the court. And I, and Moskis introduces everyone except uh, for, you, you, uh, except like Timos. He he spends a few, he spends a few seconds sort of looking, and then he says, "Seem, I I believe the truth in your words. Open the doors. You hear several latches and mechanic and like gears grinding, and the doors open. And you see Chung Long dressed in full plate armor, with several." little banners and etchings into the armor showing his devotion to the Order of the Anvil. Welcome to our little fortified church. Uh, come inside. We'll discuss what, how I can aid you. I was just told by the Anvil to free up resources and to aid you however I could. The, the doors slam shut behind you, but without hostility. <laughs> it was all a trap. <laughs> uh, Chen Long says, uh, what, he brings you actually underground, like down a series of steps. And you find he opens up a door that has three different locks and then steps in. This is my office. You might be wondering why we have so much security here, but it's because there are too many spies in the capital. And any time a pillar wants to make its actions, wants to do actions, all the other spies want, all the spies want to know what we're doing. We've had a series of break-ins, both before my tenure here and during, and we're trying our best to limit the amount of interference with our noble pillars work understandable now uh actually as you guys look in in the room yeah 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 it it, it is a it is an austere office with a desk a small okay, so i know what sunbeer is what's austere again uh, austere is not, like, sparsely decorated, not, with not that much stuff, no, like, gold-plated trophies, or, it's very practical. Okay, that sounds about right. Uh, the only thing of value you see is the equipment that Chun Lung has on him. 
and a few magic rings and necklaces that you can see glittering. But such is the life of an adventurer. He goes, how... What mission might you be doing in cooperation with the Anvil that I could help with? A, a pearl that once belonged to her is being auctioned in the capital. Hmm. And we thought she might like to have it back. A noble goal. Especially as you seek to right, to right a wrong, or to reverse the, a negative course of history. I assume then, if it is in an auction house, you do not mean to invade the auction house. While I find the place despicable, it is working within the rules of the law, and it is heavily defended. There are at least two mithril golems that they have. Ooh. Glittering we edifices. Intend, we did not. We did not intend to uh, invade the place. No. Well, I kind of take. He he gives your group a once over, and he says, uh, "I assume then you mean to buy it." Yes. Then. I, he, he seem he looks at the ceiling a bit, and then from his desk, he seems to do some kind of series of, it, series of motions underneath it, and out pops a miniature chest, like teeny tiny, like two inches across one inch, of a, like an inch by inch by two inches, and then he opens it. And his hand seems to be able to squeeze down into it, and he pulls out a hefty bag of uh, that clinks heavily. He puts it down, and he says, uh, "Actually, we what you guys saw. People can roll spellcraft checks too if they want to know. Looks like a bag. What was one. happening?" Potentially. Essentially, but it is slightly different. Okay. It is actually a spell called Secret Chest. Uh... More secure than a bag of holding. It puts it all into a... It phases it into another plane of existence. And without the right keywords and password, you can't retrieve it. Neat. He says, I assume that you are buying this pearl on behalf of the anvil and not for yourselves. I believe it would be in the interest of both parties if we borrowed it but not kept it, and eventually returned it to the anvil. He, his eye... You can sense him narrowing his eyes. He says, I do believe these resources should only be available if you mean to return it to the anvil. And if you need to borrow it, you would have to speak with the anvil herself. We will take it to the anvil directly, and from there we will bargain if she would allow us to borrow it or not. Okay, is so true? is is that act like is that a bluff? Is that true? Is that a bluff or is that oh, God, no. the truth? Okay, that's the truth. No, no, but like no, this is meta wise. Yeah. Okay. That's, well, fly plan, anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the plan. Oh, that wasn't a. That I mean, was I can Oscar's say that plan. one of you could like. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that, and TMOs can like charm person me into not. <laughs> doing it, but that is no nun's plan. Okay. So that's actually a diplomacy check. Is it? Okay. I would think. I have that. I do have I can always assist. I've got, I've got some diplomacy. 
If we all just talk at him really hard. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone in the party just says, yep, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, fucking a bunch of yes men. I'm gonna double, ch not double roll, but um, you know who we are. You can find us. We're not. We are very well known people. While I do believe you're well known, you're very hard to find. Do you know how many different spies and agents have? gotten incredibly frustrated and punished due to trying to follow your movements. They keep on trying to break into here. They're desperate. They know that you're somehow associated with the pillars, but this is the only overt pillar base in the capital. Have you caught any of these people? Some of them, yes, and then we have we get the information as we can, and then we release some we do not catch but they do not make it far in hmm. uh, mo some of them seem to just be working for powerful generals general Huruzen had a had one that we found outside but didn't try to get in but just tried to ask us politely that was a new one. <laughs> we caught one from one of the wives. I think the third wife. Yeah, that's up. Oh, the third uh, wife. Did you catch that one? Yes, and that one has been given to the proper authorities. Good. I'm sh are you aware of the third wife? He seems to think about it and he says, I know she's been caught up in this, in the, in the bus in the dreadful business with the death of the heirs, but I, I do not know any, any details. There's reasonable evidence to indicate that she may be working with the Phoenix Queen to some extent. Mm. The, the shoulder is set a bit harder says, I know that the my mistress, the Anvil, has been fighting them for a very long time. Not too many of my order directly fight the Phoenix Cult. We are not told too much about them, and we do not encounter them quite very often. If it wasn't for the Anvil telling us that they were real, some of our members might not believe it. Well, they're definitely real. <laughs> and we've been fighting them for a little while now. It seems they've had a recurrence, so you may want to invest in fire-resistant gear. He nods, and he says, I will ask for that requisition from home base. Thank you for the information. Inside the bag, he points towards it, is roughly 100,000 gold worth of Gems, platinum coins, pieces of art, tra liquid assets. I will be accompanying you in bringing this to the auction, as this is most, if not all, of the available funds that the Anvil has in the capital. Reasonable. Now, uh, meta-wise, uh, are you just going to rely on this to get you in the door, or are you actually going to try to make a, a proper bid? Uh, and if you're going to try to make a proper bid, what are you going to try to bid with? I, th personally, I think we should go as a representative of The Voice with the money. And if this isn't enough we could always try something else that we have, depending on how much. I mean, we really need to see the competition, could, right? Like, we could sell the vestments of Telmec, those druid braces no one's using, but we would need to do so beforehand, because we can't just be like, yeah, I'll pay you no, this they could appraise it also there. these braces. They could appraise it at the auction. Okay. However, I don't want to... 
I don't want to lose any part of any set. Meta-wise, oh no. Completionist, oh no. I mean, okay. I, I still... I anyone's wearing that amulet of Telmac right now. I still think the or full in, set in bonus lifetime. is going to be good, but I have hope. I mean, you'll only get it for the final boss. Shit. But then it's too good to use. Don't use it. Might be another boss out of the final boss. <laughs> yeah, well, if you guys want to piss off your benefactors, feel free. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so you're gonna go, uh, now the auction isn't for a day, so you kind of can... If you want to meet with a voice and explain your plan, you have time. Plan is a strong word, but yeah. Oh, I could we get the? I guess could we get the bracers appraised ahead of time? Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to think. So do you guys have appraise. anyone who has a praise as a... Alara? Yeah, maybe Chelsea's character has a, pra an, a praise as a skill. I definitely Let don't. me see. I have it at nine. Oh, damn. Not, not the best. Hey, I had it at two and I was pretty happy with that. Really? Like a praise? Happy what if we have that? <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, just my info bonus. <laughs> It's my bonus too. We're not very intelligent. We're very wise, though. Yes. So whenever uh, Onan wants to be more intelligent, like to cast her really high-level sorcerer spells, she's got a god thing she can do to just oop, increase her intelligence. Okay. Well, uh, Lalara through her contacts with the with the guild. Or with the effectively the the guilds and artisans could find someone who could appraise it. However, the bracers would also be an item that would likely go up to auction, and people will pay what they're willing to pay for it. It might not have a set GP value. A Isn't for its historical significance, and B because it grant it. It's a unique item that grants something no other item does. Would my level eight pawn be able to? Oh yeah. Uh, your. I will roll for your pawn. So your pawn's level eight, right? Mm hmm Okay. He appraised it, and he. All he can really say about it is that because it is a, the genuine article, it could sell for 80,000 gold, it could sell for 200,000 gold, <laughs> but regardless, it is worth more, it is worth more than 100,000 gold, he concludes. He does not know how much more because he's never seen an item of its like. Pretty good. We're gonna have to do an auction though. If Either no that or you just go up to the uh you go up to the auction people and you just say, Okay. You we get the pearl, you get these. <laughs> you kinda just try to barter before the auction happens. Oh yeah. Are we so as a group, are we giving up on the complete Telmex set? Kinda, yeah. I mean, they're not gonna just end up in someone's coffers. We could get it back eventually. Maybe. You never know what people will do with these things. Something going on in the background there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we heard. I was watching someone throw a corgi into the into a snow pile. It was really cute. I thought I was. That, that that does sound like it. Is, it, is it everyone sounds... is everyone okay with time set? Yep. Well, I know you are. I want to hear anyone else other than you. 
I, I was guess. hoping everyone else would chime in. <laughs> after. I guess. I mean, it's our only thing, right? It's our only thing we don't want to give up. Or we we would be okay giving up. But we could also just be... put it on loan with the, the anvil. We're, we're, we're killing the Phoenix Queen. Or helping against the cause. She can lend us some equipment. But Lauren, Matt... Is Matt muted? Oh, is Matt's Discord messing up again and we can't hear him for the past 10 minutes? Oh. Or is he dead? Ah, I'm assuming that, dead. Ah. <laughs> be as if he was speaking, we were talking right over him. Matt, we couldn't hear you for a while. We still can't hear you, actually. Am I alive again? Well, see, now you are. Here. You're alive again. We can hear okay. you. Okay. I don't think that we should abandon the, the Talmud, the, the vestments. Okay. Um, if we can. All right. That I'm. I, I agree with that. So that's. I know I'm giving you too much choice. Two... I shouldn't. I shouldn't be doing this. So that's two people against giving it away, and two people for. Uh. No, I think you should keep it. All right. Settled. Okay. You All guys right. will not use it as a bargaining chip. Now, I can make I can make a really cool ice sculpture. <laughs> yeah, trade that. They'll yeah. love it. Make a whole bunch really fast. Make a lot of money. Just keep selling it to a vendor cool. nearby. Just make a whole army of ice sculptures and convince the like emperor, like yeah, this is you know, like this is terracotta you. army. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Or you could quickly quickly teleport over to Ruha and make an ice cube selling business. <laughs> <laughs> they need it. Oh, they love ice. It's the desert. I mean, I don't think I could really make something and then sell it for what we need it to be worth. A hundred thousand gold is a lot of gold. That would be more like you giving up all of your equipment. I mean, me crafting something and then selling it. Ah, it'll take it'll take longer than the day you have. Challenge accepted. <laughs> okay, so the the anvil might even might even just be happy to know who. Got the who got the uh, the bid, even if you guys fail. That's true. So, how much trouble would we be in if we were ever dishonest or anything at this auction? Like, what if we were like, we're gonna sell? This? If if you said if you won the bid and then couldn't pay, it uh, they would likely try to take everything they could. They would kind of be like filing for bankruptcy. <laughs> The auction, this is an auction house at the center of a magically powerful empire that caters to the highest bidder. It is not an organization that would, would see its reputation tarnished. They would hire, they would likely hire adventurers like yourselves to hunt you guys down. So what you're saying is we probably shouldn't uh, find out who it, who buys, who wins the auction, and then kill them and take it. Ooh, yeah. Well, uh -huh. if you did it sufficiently away from the auction house, they might not care. <laughs> but it's if you're trying to make the auction, if you make the auction house, if you ruin its business, it's going to ruin your life, is what their intention would be. If they succeed, it would be up to you guys in the roles. Take it at the end after later on. Maybe next week, next Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, Modskus is not for just blatant theft. <laughs> yeah, that seems a little a little low. We're trying to we are we're trying to preserve nope. the empire, not destroy it. Lawful types. <laughs> 
And is this where the party splits? <laughs> Over simple theft. Next time on Dungeons and Dragons. Dragons! Law versus chaos! Stealing versus the greater good! Who shall triumph? Lilara, because she just freezes everyone. <laughs> uh, That's true. <laughs> Ice Cube! Okay, everyone, listen up. So, the the auction of uh, to go to the voice. Yes. Okay. Uh, you guys arrange a meeting with the voice. She etch she etches out a ten minute meeting period. You guys, well, you guys go to her office. She goes, ah, hello, please tell me, good news, is the amulet charging? The yes. ritual site is underway. We have found a suitable one and are building defenses. And the amulet is charging. Fantastic. Do you know when it might be done? Uh, no. Okay. We'll know when it's done. We'll be told. Oh, it's one of those... Uh, he can't get a pillar to move if it doesn't want to. She sighs. She she looks back at you guys. So, what can I help you with? Is the rampaging empire coming to threaten us? Is there a phoenix cult that's literally under our feet? Is uh, the sky falling? Oh, actually, yes, mm -hmm. on the Phoenix Cult thing. Uh, did mm -hmm. we tell you about the crown being in the vault? She looks at you and she goes, no. Yeah. That's... No, you didn't. <laughs> we forgot about that. We're... Mm. Uh, like, you can see, like, <laughs> she's trying to keep a poker face, but you see her face, like, you see, like, several years just leave. Like, just, just, just get added onto her face. <laughs> and she goes, oh, no. <laughs> and that's probably... The Belnorn knew. Wait, how did the Belnorn know? Because we well, it's because piece. you guys brought your the Phoenix artifacts to her. Right, okay. And she could use that to divine through the interference. Gotcha. So it's somewhere below the city? Somewhere in the vault. Oh, by the gods above. So yeah, we need to get in there at some point. Which is, I know, difficult. The only person who can... The only people who can get in there are actually the the Emperor and the heir select. So the... Once the heir is old enough, we perform a ritual so the mantle will pass smoothly to the next one. Can you suggest... Oh, hmm... The current one is for you. Uh, they could not survive the mantle being passed on to them. That's why there would be a regency council. The mantle can only be passed on when the recipient could survive the process. What? If... It's a very powerful boon to be granted, but it, if the body is not ready for it, it will rip it apart in ways that resurrection cannot fix. What if the emperor were to learn... I know his state isn't stable, but what would what do you think his reaction would be if he was convinced the crown was in the vault? He might not be able to... He might know it. Currently, from what I understand, there might be three things. He might know it's there and not care. He might know it's there and be influenced by it. Or he might not even know it's there. And either be influenced by it or not. I have never encountered the Phoenix Crown. I do not know if it's... What powers it has. If it has the abilities to suggest. If it has... Uh, it can't be affecting the Emperor's mind with a, with a spell that is detectable. Because we've run all the tests we can. Either its its messaging is getting through the protection of the mantle, or 
it could just simply be talking to him. Hmm. Guess... No, no magical control, just speaking. We can't cure opinions with magic. Not unless it's mind control. Or he could not know it's there. There are piles of powerful things in there. Hmm. By gods, I think there's even an adamantine golem. But okay. that should stay That's hidden expensive. down there. It's a foolishness of an earlier emperor who was overthrown for, you know, spending too much of the kingdom's resources and making an adamantine <laughs> golem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if it's controllable. And there's app. Is it a different dimension? Uh, from my understanding, the entrance to the vault is in our dimension, and the majority of the vault is in our dimension. But there's parts of which that are not. But the the walls are lined with lead, Medusa blood, Gorgon blood. The various standard ways of preventing someone from becoming a ghost and going through the walls. To prevent teleportation in. There are deadly traps, there's poisons that only the person with the mantle of the Emperor or with severe protections could survive. There are many things, th this vault has been custom built by Emperor after Emperor to protect them. Hmm. Possibly the pillars might have a way in, but even then, the Emperor's Vault is built for and by the Emperor for himself. And I don't think any of the wives are currently related enough to the Emperor for them to be able to fool the defenses. Because the defenses are based off of the mantle. Ugh. She she's pacing now, talking to herself. There might be a way of getting through, some clever way of teleporting in, that I haven't thought of. Well, we'll leave you to think about that for now. Um, we were also thinking about. Uh, we met someone named Sarah Jin. Did we talk to you about him? Uh, she thinks about it and she says, I have heard the name, but I don't know the details. The name has come and gone. So we think I've read it in a book. So we, we tell her all about Sarajan. Oh! And how we are trying, probably going to plan to destroy the artifacts one by one. Which might that help. would be a grand blow against an insidious cult that has been ravaging the Empire for, for since its inception. You'd be doing the Empire a great service in doing what you are. If the, if the ritual site for the Black Summoner survives, we can likely reinforce it and use it as the battleground for destroying the other phoenix artifacts. Perfect. That's, of course, if it survives, we, we don't know exactly what that amulet will do. But with Serge in there, we might be able to make it not an explosion. Or a new Ruha. Or a new Ruha. I do not need... One Ruha is enough. We don't need more. Now, is the thank you for at least some good news in, in all of that. She says, now, I assume, uh, do, is there anything else? Or shall I start thinking about how to defeat an undefeatable vault? Anybody else? Uh, well, there's... Oh, go ahead, Lauren. Um, a question for the uh, for the voice. So she, she turns and nods. Is one possessing the mantle able to transport items into and out of the vault? I do believe so. 
Uh, part uh, the the vault and the mantle are intricately connected. Hmm. I wonder. Uh, I do. I do believe that for that the emperor must physically visit the vault to actually retrieve more than maybe one thing at a time. Hmm. Perhaps. Hmm. If you were able to be convinced to go into the vault of his own volition, maybe we could, let's say, hitch a ride. If hmm. we were able to disguise ourselves, maybe attach ourselves to him somehow, like a bag of holding, a really big one. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I'm also... I give him his... some object to go into the vault with. I'm also his concubine. I mean, or some person... He also wants to kill it. you. Yeah, he does want you to die. No, that's fine. But apparently he's had a few visits with a replacement of you. Oh. So. Throwing shade. Maybe, maybe he forgets. No, that was a literal thing that the... What's her face said? The voice said. Oh, you yeah. You hired yeah. someone to cover for you in that department during your adventuring. <laughs> there you are, Ian. What you have... Okay. Yep. This is my auction loadout. You know, auction. <laughs> for the intense combat that's going to happen in this auction. That's why most of it is stuff like see invisibility and locate object. <laughs> I get that. So, uh, are you going to ask the voice anything about the auction, or did you just come here to say, Blur, this is what we're doing. If, advise us when you know what we're going to do next. And kind of just leave. Uh, hey. hey, so there's this auction coming up. <laughs> gonna be there? It's gonna be fun. <laughs> you know, if we like oh, bring around, uh, well, the, there. there's gonna be a party. Want to come? The Imperial Auction House is a venerable institution that's been around for over a thousand years in various ways, shapes, and forms. Uh. I occasionally go there to bid on bid on items. Is there one of interest? There is. Uh, the Pearl of... The Celestial Pearl of Serenity. She thinks... Oh! It is very rare for something like that to be sold. Especially if it's genuine. The auction house is quite good at detecting frauds, but... There comes. are some black marks on the institution. In, this, in a thousand years, it, there were mistakes. This information comes directly from one of the pillars. Ah. She says, then it is likely true. Now, the Pearl of Serenity is most known for its ability to stop conflict Yes, I would be interested in trying to get that. I assume that you didn't bring it that up just to leave empty-handed. No, we were wondering if we, if you would allow us to act as your representatives. Hmm. And I assume you'd. No, oh, none. Slowly turning her head towards uh, TMOs, as if like, are you? Is that? And and I assume that you need my financial backing to actually make a bid. Hold on, uh, Metawise. I thought that was the I thought that was the goal here. I mean, we should be upfront that we're also getting the anvils back for it. Like we could. Pretend that we aren't double dip, and then we have to decide who actually gets it. Oh. But, uh, yeah. Hmm. But I think, like, because the anvil and uh, the voice are mostly on the same side here, I assume they'll be fine as long as someone responsible gets it. Just yeah, that we need to disclose it. I think I'd like to give the dragon her her treasure. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Oh, let yeah. me guess. These are going to turn out to be eggs or something. It's like, oh no, they're babies. Mm -hmm. Stolen. How sad. 
<laughs> so I I tell the voice that um the Pearl of Serenity once belonged to the anvil and that we would like the chance to return the pearl to the anvil. We just need the voice's help to get into the auction. Ah, a noble goal. Also, making one the giving up with the pearl to the pillar will likely mean that it's not going to be used to force negotiations and unjust wars and, well, to be abused to the full extent that an artifact like that could be abused. She nods. She says, I will get you into the auction. I will sim uh she she starts writing something down. She puts like hot wax, a, a drop of her blood, and then a signet on it. And uh she rolls up the scroll and hands it to Mosgus. She goes, this will allow you into the auction house without them needing to know or check your, that you have the cash on hand. Oh, perfect. This is a writ of, I guess, ability to pay. Now, do not abuse this, as if you do, I will likely have to it will consume much of my political capital to keep the auction house from doing terrible things to you. Or I will have to throw you under a bus. Sorry, I wouldn't it wouldn't be a bus. It would be metawise. It would be I would have to throw you to the wolves, as it were. So do not put me in that position. Understood. Now I assume that you are you... do you have enough liquid cash to actually do this? As adventurers, most of your worth is in items. We worked out a deal. We have a hundred thousand with us. That's just the open... Uh, is... is... what is the opening bid? Is it a hundred thousand? It's a hundred thousand. Oh no. We have enough for the okay. opening bid. <laughs> I guess that's it. I guess we need to think of something more. She kind of looks at you as you guys suddenly realize that you only have enough for the opening bid. And she goes, Be To secure good relations with the, the pillars... I can authorize the use of some of the diplomatic funds that the emperor ha the empire has, as well as one or two of my own personal items. She sort of she says, "Give me five minutes." She starts going through scrolls, sort of pulling stuff out, looking at it, putting it back into the scroll where it just kind of gets absorbed in. Eventually, she produces another sack. And she says, this is 75,000 gold worth of liquid assets. Add it to the bid. Oh, boy. And will you want the change back, I assume? <laughs> I, I expect you're going to have to add more. Uh... Every major player will want to be throwing down more gold at this. Some might even offer minor artifacts. Hmm. Oh Regardless, to, uh... try to find out who has it, even if you fail to make the bid. I will want to know who now has such horrific power. All right. It would be easy if they were criminals of some kind. I mean, there probably will be criminals there. Right, but these specific people need to be criminals. Mm 
we also have to prepare for the I, the uh, possibility that the prince will be there. Yes. Yep. We actually need to be. Oh, you know what? We should probably yeah, warn them ahead of time. Spread. Like warn the auction house. Seeing as he is, you know, a wanted man. Less wanted every day. When did that ever stop him before? <laughs> we no longer have any contact from the spy that was in Ruha, so most of the claims that would actually hold him in court now are pretty much moot. If we took him to trial, he'd walk. Unless you've tried to force the truth from him, but that's ah, rather yes. difficult. And he could probably walk out of the auction with the pearl if he wanted. That's fair. Yeah, let's stay on the lookout for him as well. Okay. So, do you have... Are you set? Have you girded your loins into dealing with the auction? I think we're ready. Okay, for next we need to deal with outfits. Are people still wearing their combat gear to an auction? I hope not. No. I mean, I mean, like I'm always yeah, already I'm wearing, always nope. yeah, I'm always wearing something pretty. <laughs> I'm wearing I, if I am wearing my armor to that auction. Okay. I'm an inquisitor. <laughs> That's what we do. I, can you at least I, wear a bow tie or something? <laughs> <laughs> I can I wear. Mean, you can't fix. Uh, you can't fix that. Wait, we can comb your hair. <laughs> is, oh, no. Are you, oh, aren't you bald? Yeah. Or shaved? Well, uh, or... That's a good question. Give me a nice hat. I'm probably that's shaved. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys actually buy, like, noble... There is noble clothing you can buy that gives you a circumstance bonus. Do you okay. Own on I... snaps and says, I've got it. TMO. I also have craft clothing. You're not using clothing. your hat disguise as much anymore. Would you like to lend that to someone much more in need? I mean, Musk sort of uh, fix his whole. I mean, I was gonna use it to get to get all dressed up, but okay. I mean, I you're will, already looking fine. I will wear robes of my goddess on top of my. That'll robe. have to work. All right. <laughs> okay. Maybe. The monkey has a, a small suit that seems to be tailor-made his size. You guys, I love high-level adventures. I mean, you you can do that. You're just like, yes, I I have enough spare money that I have a suit for my monkey. <laughs> Are we the bad guys? We're dressing up our animals. Oh no. Well, what's Akana gonna wear? <laughs> She's gonna be in my armor until we need her. Oh yeah, actually, yeah. Keep your armor. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> Plus, it gives me protection from mind affecting spells. So, you know. Well, that's actually very good. Yeah. Or I suppose if that's done now. Is it done? Yes, now? it is. Good. Everything's done. I'm all I'm all locked and loaded. As is Akane. I have the sleeves of many garments, so I use I put those on and Ooh. be all decked out in really nice formal wear. But underneath in the armor. <laughs> I don't know if they would really expect a group of adventurers not to have armor. They're, I guess they're just assuming that they're, uh, they're, they, they likely will ask you to surrender your weapons. Yeah, that's, it yeah, is that's supposed right. to be okay. a neutral ground. Actually fine. Akane's a better yeah. weapon. Also, <laughs> I am a weapon. Exactly. <laughs> I go looking like this. <laughs> oh, okay. perfect. Now we're talking. You had my interest, but now you have my attention. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Is you a good. Do y'all think we could talk to the au auction house, like themselves, going in with, like, the voices stuff before the auction and be like, hey. Like, the stuff might be going down here, like, political business, like, with Ruhani people, and maybe you should be more cautious with sensitive items, and have them, like, use decoys or something for the auction. I think they know how to hide items. They run an auction for quite some know. time. I don't trust them. Okay, so, uh, my goodness. 
Matt, that is some, that is a beautiful outfit. It is. So you're going in your bridal dress? Yes. Are you going as a woman? Yes. Okay. So you guys get to the auction house. It's deep in the noble district. Uh, it is about an hour before the auction of the pearl, and I assume you guys kind of came early so you could talk with the establishment. Or just get the lay of the land before you had to go and do everything. As, you're, uh, as you approach, you do see that there is a lot of security, both the city and people in very formal robes, you realize that they're all auction house employees. Underneath the robes, you do hear the occasional clink of metal or kind of the stretch of leather. You're quite sure that all of the auction house employees are armed. Uh, all of you, you're kind of, there are some multiple entrances you go towards one that has one of the shorter lines, and as as you get up, you see a very like well groomed, well dressed ogre with it, uh, at the door, looking down expectantly at you. You have proof of money. We provide Let's the rich show the letter. <laughs> It looks at the letter, sniffs it, looks at it more, rolls it back up and gives it to you. You can enter, you get main floor or balcony, you decide. Is the balcony private or is it just a large balcony? Uh, balconies are more private. You will have to go through the security check show true identities, and then will be allowed through in whatever disguise you choose. As long as the auction house knows who you are, we do not care who you present as. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, That's not good. Uh, no. <laughs> Say, do you have a list of people who have come in here? Only Big Boss does... And where's this big boss right now? In big boss's room. Then where's big boss's room? <laughs> inside the building. Where inside the building? Take us to him. You want to speak with big boss? Yes. He seems to look at one of his other guards and then looks down at you and says, because you had fancy letter, yes. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, you do have, like, you do have your paladin ambassador of the of the anvil with you <laughs> as well. You guys, you guys go. You're led by the ogre. Who, look, you first you go through security. Evid they they have. Uh, they have someone who you you see has a lens of true sight, looking down at all of you. You are you're allowed to go into a side booth, soundproofed, and say who you are for their records. Mm. They have they seem to have various layers of truth zones and illusion stripping techniques, and whatnot. <laughs> Do all of you answer like when each of you is brought into the booth? Do you try to answer truthfully or no? Moskis will answer truthfully. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good point, bad. Yeah, truthfully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You, you are Lalara concubine of the Emperor. Uh... You don't need to say out loud to the rest of the group, Timos. But do you do you lie to, do you lie to me, Matt? Do I lie to the DM? Yes. Oh no. <laughs> it goes far deeper. 
no, wait, so you don't tell the whole group because we have okay. no idea who you are. You're just some red woman who walked in with us. <laughs> yeah, yep, <laughs> totally. <laughs> we have no idea. And then halfway through, it's the prince the whole time. Holy shit. Okay, so you guys are, uh, the paladin goes in, comes out, I'm just waiting on something, I'm just looking something up, be a second, especially because I also have to look at what I named the auction house guy. Yeah. So the auction house guy is, uh, I guess, auction house master is Hao Zong. Auction house master has, has been the master for several years. Hey, he's been the master of the auction house for several years. He is a a goblin, but uh, a rather a rather intelligent one, from the various rumors, and that he personally owes his life to the emperor. And he was put on char in charge of the auction house. Because he's demonstrated his loyalty to the Emperor beyond a doubt. So all of you are led back through. Uh, through the security. You're allowed to put on whatever disguises you want. And you end up at the very, at the very top uh, of the building. It's a massive auction house. Beautifully and luxuriously decorated. And the auctioneer's room requires several doors, layers of guards, traps, etc. Before to get to. Um, mm -hmm. Before we go in, uh, Mazgus turns to Timos and says, do you have true sight? Uh, no, I've seen... True sight costs material. Oh, does yeah, it? True sight has a material component cost, so that's why it's not usually used. Oh, God, I hate you that. really want it. I hate that. I know, right? Uh, okay, I was going to see if we could have you scout the crowd, since you were the most disguised out of all of us, to see if you can spot him, but uh, you probably won't be able to see through with any disguise he has. Yeah. It's not a huge cost. It's only like 100 gold. It might be worth it for this exact scenario. And we do have a communal fund, but... I don't yeah. think I can cast it. Not even with spell no, on can. No, I think that... Only Onun or Lalara would be able to cast it as of now. All right. Didn't know you were planning on it, but would you allow me to alter our my? Uh, yeah, if if you th like, you'd be going to an auction house in disguises. I would allow you to have True Sight as as a thing. Okay, how long does True Sight even last? That's like an hour, right? If it's like a round, then never mind. <laughs> Okay, true seeing. Two hundred fifty. A minute gold. per level. A minute per level. I could at least make that extended and make it like twenty-four minutes, but it's not. Can you put that on long. anyone? Or only yeah. yourself? Uh, creature touched. Oh, yep. Perfect. Then. I think TMOs you're the you're probably safe enough on your own. Especially probably. in here, of all places. Yeah. So sort of wizard level two, but it's gonna be level three. So I wanna make it extended. I also add on my own. Uh, oh wait, true sight. Gives you see invisibility, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. Okay, never mind. It is the truest. Sees so... through all <laughs> illusion. Strong shit. It yeah, is. Strong I really shit. wish we could get a permanent true sight, but that's expensive. Stupid. Yeah. Expensive. <laughs> I don't know if I need secret. Yeah. Okay, well, front, you guys will have true sight, but you guys go up to the office. Uh, the overseer, the, the auction house master, you're let through several doors and eventually reach the opulent office of the auction house master. 
he is a goblin with an incredible amount of magic items on him. <laughs> He's just, he is glowing as a Christmas tree. When he moves his hand to drum on the table, you hear the clinking of metal on metal. And he goes, Esteemed guests! <laughs> Let's give a Godfrey. Yep. He's back. How can I assist you for today's auction? Uh, Mosgus uh, produces the writ from the voice again. We are here. Ah! Uh, we are here on behalf of the voice uh, for t to not only participate in the auction, but we are also looking for a specific person who we suspect will be here today. And we were told that you know everyone who comes in and out of here. I will, if they've come in. I assume that you would be seeking some kind of arrest. Is this a criminal? This is Prince Ruhan of Ruha. Ah! Uh, he snaps his fingers and one of the aides by the wall kind of uh, goes and fetches him a a stack of papers, and he just starts flitting. He puts his hand on it, closes his eyes, and then open, takes his hand off of it after about six seconds. Goes, the only Ruhani is King Ruha. Oh, That's not King Ruha. That's Prince Ruhan. It's, I do believe it is uh, the brother of Pris, Prince Ruha. Ru Mm, Ruha. That's actually the prince, though. They're twins. They look the same. Ah! He must have tried to, ma to make it through my series of lie detections. He must be incredibly good at what he does. Yes. Yes. <laughs> do, you, do you happen to know if there's a way for us to find where he is now that he's disguised himself? Oh, yes. He is in one of the booths. On the bal one of the balcony booths. He came in with enough money that he deserves a booth. Now, we don't want to cause any trouble or ruckus. Oh, yes. Well, he sort of says, well, if you can confirm that it's the correct criminal, I will have him escorted out. And you can settle this outside of my establishment. Muscus. I am not against the law of the Empire, but I must maintain my client's security. Muscus rummages. Do do to confirm it? Uh, blah, blah, blah. rummages around for a moment and then pulls out the shackles of anti magic. Ah! A proper, a proper kind of shackle! <laughs> He takes a look at it, and you can see that he's appraised it and it's worth instantly. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, ah, a pretty penny there. Now, uh, I can't let you shackle him until he is outside my establishment. It's very bad for the reputation to have people exit in chains. Mm. We don't do slavery anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but we can I can that. understand your caution, teleportation and whatnot. I allow you to know what there's no teleportation that's possible inside the auction house. Before you leave in one of the side doors, I'll let you put them on him. To clarify, no teleportation out or no teleportation within? Either. Okay. Dimensional anchors. Okay. There are too many high-level thieves that believe that they can just teleport out. I love it to see it on their face once they actually get in and then the spells fail. <laughs> People believe magic is the only solution, when really, you just need magic to be the defense and then physical violence to be the solution. Muscus nods in agreement. Now... Uh, I see that you haven't actually picked a booth yet. I uh, Do you want to share the booth with this ruffian? That'd be perfect. That would be amazing. 
he writes that down <laughs> on one of the pieces of paper. He says, well, I will have security escort you and you can speak with this King Ruhan. Please, if it is actually the king, do not make a fuss. <laughs> is there a way you can d discern if this is the criminal or just merely his relative? Hmm. I think there might be. How so? Will it involve <laughs> things bursting into flame, violence, killing him, and then resurrecting? There's, there's many ways that I can't allow to happen in my auction house. <clears throat> uh, we may have to figure out a different way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good plan. <laughs> well, we'll know that if someone uses detect magic and watches him, he likes to cast magic while he's talking. Yeah, he does. He controls minds without anyone noticing. That's his true strength. So... Uh, he tries to cast something on us. That's a dead giveaway. Okay. Otherwise, they are twins. Oh, we could also... He did want to trade. And we could say that we're here to trade. I forget what what did his letter have? What did he want to give us? Uh and now now if you look in the notes, I actually do have oh, that's where it is. Prince Ruhan's letter. <laughs> he has items that may interest us, but he didn't say specifically. But he did want the Pearl of Luck. He also Let's see, did he mention anything about Talmax set? Yes. Uh, the incensor. Yeah, the the sensor. The, well, the, uh, one of the, the part of the Talmax set you don't have. Mm. Hey. Yeah. Hey. I have since made a setting for the pearl, and I'm wearing it like a necklace. Okay, I like awesome. it. Awesome. And luckily, that does not actually interfere with your uh, with your necklace slot because the pearl is slotless. As long as you have it on your possession, it works. Nice. So you can have like multiple blinged out necklaces. It'll be great. <laughs> also, most people won't know it's the rune. It's the pearl of luck. You guys only really knew... Be they might know it's a magical pearl, but they probably don't know it's an artifact. How big is the pearl, by the way? Uh, is this, like, I normal pearl size? I would probably say, like, double the size of a normal pearl. It's still small. Okay. It's not like a hand-sized <laughs> pearl. Look at this. <laughs> it's not something... But it is noticeable. It also has... Uh, a, like, green veins in it. Okay. Okay. So you guys... Uh, the, the auction master says, Is there anything more I can do for you, lords and ladies? I think that will be all. Thank you. I hope you've brought enough to bid on the item rather than just focused only on the whole criminal takedown aspect. My auction house has many wonders and wares. He is... He is a businessman after all. Wants us to sell stuff, yeah. <laughs> or buy stuff, rather. <laughs> buy and sell. Lots of money. Also, if you ever come across something you need, a uh, very high-value item you need to be sold, I, I can uh, quite help you with uh, that. You know what? We may as well do that right now. Uh, and Muscus, or whoever has the piece of Talmac can produce it. 
Okay, you you, you put that down, or you show it, and he immediately goes to analyze it. Oh, oh, look at the worksmanship here. This must be from, oh, over 2,000 years. Starts, like, scrutinizing it more, and he says, now, what is this other than a particularly well-made ancient bracer? It's Talmak the Black Spicer. Oh, his eyes grow a bit wide. And he goes, is this collateral for a bid on an existing item, or is this something you want to sell in and of itself? We're looking... We, we're interested in the Pearl of Serenity. Ah. But we're not sure how much that will actually end up costing. Well, the last time a pearl came onto the market here was 200 years ago, and it was sold for roughly 400,000 gold. Oof. Well, it was the Pearl of Balance, but I think whoever took that, uh, they didn't retain it for very long, is what my understanding is. The Pearl of Balance is... Very powerful, but only in the right hands. Uh, now, to look at this, I would say you wish for the Pearl of Serenity. I do believe that if you have this as collateral, I will count it as 200,000 gold. Towards your bid. Hmm. Halfway there. Uh, now, if you guys want to try to haggle, now would be the time. <laughs> <sighs> Who's got the best <laughs> diplomacy? Probably me. I'm at 16. I can roll twice. I got 11, but I could add that to it. I got 13. So I've got 22. Ooh, dang. That's, that's pretty right. good. I'm, how many people can assist? I'm going to say that, too, because oh, having, gonna give you a having five other people going, <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we want 400,000! Hell yeah! <laughs> okay. That one gives you a, like, a elbow to the, to the ribs to sort of, I don't know, tell you to say something, and it's the fortune spell. Touch of luck? Nice. You'll get advantage on this roll. If you should is it so choose. plus 20 or is it re-roll? This is uh, re-roll. Okay. Re-roll and take the highest. All right. So I, I know oh, I'm going to What are we talking about? Olara could just add 20 to her roll. Or I guess 12. Yeah, with a Pearl of Luck. She could add 12. Only 12. Whoever has the Pearl can add their level to once per day to a roll. Chelsea, what's your base diplomacy? 13. Oh. Uh, 25, we can give you a reroll as well. Yeah, let's do that. Me and Timos okay, yeah. will assist. I will nudge her with the elbow instead. The elbow's been redirected. <laughs> it's like a full 180 degree turn. 360 no scope. So I do 25? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so it's 1d20 plus 25 and you roll twice and we'll take the highest. Oh, that should be 22. That's that's fine. You'll get an additional. Hey, okay, 37. that thirty-seven plus four, so that is the other two going. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> so I guess Lilara basically, you know, she turns on the charm and the smile and says, "Surely you could do better than that, darling." <laughs> uh, and you and you realize that the type that the. You feel a small pulsing of the pearl as it just helps you know exactly the... It nudges you towards the exact timing to have the best impact on the words. And he, and he looks and you guys spend... Because diplomacy checks actually take like a minute or more. You guys start like having a lovely conversation. 
a sort of talking about the virtues of this and how he should ca cast him more, and really it should have its own auction house night devoted to it. <laughs> and he says, fine, fine. It'll count as 350 gold. 50,000 gold. <laughs> oh, wow, we did poorly. He rolled like 41. <laughs> he went from being like neutral to friend helpful. Nice. But he says, if you actually are going to use it, I will need to keep the bracer for me to create its own auction night. All right. I guess that's the deal. You guys shake on it? Is everyone good with that? Sure. Yeah. Hey, uh, he drafts up a, a very simple written, magical written contract. He's it's very he's very quick at it. You think that he has experience with this kind of thing. I wonder. Uh he says, This is just us agreeing that the item is still yours, but the auction house will hold it. It is under the protection of the auction house, and if anything happens to it, should it be stolen or hurt or destroyed, although I do not think that such a thing can be really destroyed. Not easily. Uh, we will compensate you for the the agreed value of 300,000, 350,000 gold. If we use this as collateral, you give me the right to sell it. You will still get your money's worth. Do I get a note about who we sell, you sell to? He adds that to the clause. He says, sure, but if they mysteriously die <laughs> and they are relieved of their artifact, I will know who to send the authorities to question first. I am okay. a business. I can't just let my customers be murdered by other customers. <laughs> yes, of course. That was not what we meant to oh, say. None. How could you? I just uh, so sure. you 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 sign it. Uh, you, Lalara signs it with. Uh, he signs it with a flourish. He hands it over to Lalara to sign. Lalara, do you sign it? Chelsea, we've lost her. Uh... I didn't hear you. Sorry, I was. I was getting some ice cream, but I could hear everything. <laughs> okay. Okay. God damn it. You know that 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 sounds perfectly like a perfectly okay excuse. So yeah. No, I want ice cream. Um, you didn't have some. I should go get ice cream. Um. So Laura also signs it with a pretty signature. Okay. It's signed. He take. He he shows you the item. He shows you like a secret cha A secret chest for it that it is going to go into mm -hmm. and effectively he puts it into a vault you, you you don't see him how he opened the vault but you see the vault open and him putting it in there and closing it he says that item is the most protected thing that's gonna be here you have my guarantee or my name isn't yeah, let me, let me double check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How Zong! Now, now my dear high bidders, please, let me have my, my guest, let me have my security escort you to your place of honor, right next to King slash Prince slash whoever Ruhan. Thank you very much. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> so you guys get escorted. With the amount of security around you, people are starting to think like you must be really high rollers to have that much. Oh yes. You guys are brought to a secluded and protected balcony, and sitting on it is uh oh, wait. A... before yeah. first oh not explains to the group her plan. She's gonna sit in a bubble of silence generated by her monkey. If she sees the slightest change of expression on your face, the slightest 
witch of something going wrong with you guys. She's going to break his enchantments like snapping a twig, send the monkey after him, and we'll go from there. That sounds good. And whether or not she notices anything, by the time this conversation is over, she'll break enchantment anyways. Uh, just to be sure. Mosgus adds, uh, he taps on his, on his chest a little bit. Don't bother paying attention to me. You, you okay. made sure of that. Okay. You, you know, yes. you, made, you made the armor. No, Valara did. Uh, fuck. This is fuck! Kind of confusing. <laughs> <laughs> she she okay. handled it. She's got me. She's got my back. <laughs> and right. my front. Yeah. My general torso area. It's great. Mm -hmm. Fuck, I love armor. My mind's in my chest, so it's fine. <laughs> A man thinks with his stomach. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and I also make sure to keep my eye on uh, whoever is in that booth with the true seeing. I mean, it's probably just going to be him. It, I mean, they, they look the same, okay. so... <laughs> okay. But yeah, do it. <laughs> you guys step into into the booth... Someone and you see looks very much like the prince, but you know there's a twin. Kind of. They are. Looks... Okay, yeah. so let me explain the scene as he would have set it up. He's got his chair facing towards the door, sort of expectantly. <laughs> He's got his feet up on another chair. He's eating some sort of pretzels or something. And he just looks absolutely delighted to see you all. <laughs> and he says, Old friends! Come in, come in. How are you doing? Okay, uh, one moment. I do need to, because Timos has true sight. He sees some shit. <laughs> he has true sight on so he can see through Prince Ruha's clothes. Oh no! And since oh, his I... feet are up, it's a really weird <laughs> angle for him to just sort of, you know. Yeah, I mean, you never even knew, knew it, but Prince's, the prince's fake sand illusion that he wears. Uh, That's all could he everyone roll perception anyway? I'm sure he's going to have us do it. Yeah, I guess. True side or no true Perception! Do I get to add... Oh, no. no. Never mind. No. I already did it. Once a day. My perception is 22. Goddamn. Right. I think I have some bonus to that from Titan Dorinus. Let me look that up because we got. Wow. I was cold. Okay. So why did you guys roll a bunch of perception I, checks? I figured we should. <laughs> okay. I was just following the. the crowd. Oh, you beat me. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh. oh none sees. Uh, okay. I, uh, Onan and Mazgus. Uh... Oh, shit. Oh, boy. The stream hey, gets to hear it for once. Hooray! Yay. I know, I know. So, uh, you beat its disguise check. Ooh. It is a simulacrum. Oh. It is an ice sculpture that has been given through an incredibly expensive process the appropriate uh it appears to be the original but has half the real creatures levels or hit dice that was gonna be too easy <laughs> and uh it is under whoever made it made it abs absolute command now is that like a um can they see through his eyes or anything like that or is it just a a golem, essentially. It's it's see it's more like a golem, but knowing the prince, there might be other spells he's layered on to it to allow him to see through it. Oh, okay. It could actually be used as a focus for clear, uh, divination, because it will allow divination from the from its master. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So it's up to you. Uh, but. Fair enough. That that is what you that is what you see because you guys rolled a mighty fine perception check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, 
Uh, do you guys sit down to the prince's? Yeah. To the prince slash king slash whoever's. I'll take a seat. I walk up to uh, the the prince. Okay. okay. You're making me a bit nervous now. Tiamos, you know we're all friends here. No matter how we look. He, oh, and uh, speaking of, the prince, instead of his normal sand, it's like black coal, because he's in the morning garb. All of his gems, yes. all the gold oh. that he normally wears, is silver, and all of his gems and rubies and emeralds are all a dark purple. Like, he's got the, he's got the look. He's gone fucking emo. <laughs> I, he, he almost turns to Moscus and he says, that's a nice sculpture. Yes. I mean, that's a little bit harsh. Yes, it is a nice sculpture. I'm a simulacrum. I still have feelings. We both know that's not true. No, it kind of is. I have all his memories, well, most of his memories, and his feelings, his ambitions, his personality. It's just, you know, a little bit of a different existence. He's not necessarily wrong. Hmm. I don't know if Moscus so would it, know that. If uh, roll spellcraft to see if you actually know anything about simulacrums. <laughs> Anyone can do this because wonderful. he's mentioned that out loud. And because Moscus is, uh, because Diamos's spellcraft is horrifyingly low. <laughs> <laughs> what spells? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Both Lauren, uh, both Shakti and Lalara know that simulacrums are ice, effectively sculptures of ice or snow that have been infused with a copy of the original hmm. uh, through illusion shadow magic. So it's actually, it is kind of real. The uh, the simulacrum is half as powerful as the original, and it's under the creator's absolute control, but there's no special telepathic link inbuilt with it. You can add that with other spells. Hmm. So, uh, and it it does it can have feelings, but it's effectively a lesser copy of the original. You can understand why the prince did this. <laughs> so, so how, how have you all been? I uh, he looks at the who's it the priest who's with us the yeah oh no of the animal. he's like my God yeah. Jimmy's aged horribly. <laughs> <laughs> I I turn to my uh, he he says I do not know who this Jimmy is. But they likely have not aged so horribly. <laughs> he has no humor. I, I turn to Moskus and uh, I ask, can I just pick him up and take him outside? Why don't we see what he has to say first? Damn. <laughs> I wanted to smash him. Yeah, that sounds like my good friend to give us. And he's just staring at the lady in red who's like, I want to smash him. <laughs> <laughs> so, Probably she's wearing black. So why yeah, were you expect? Oh, yeah. What message do you have for us? Uh, I have a lot of purposes. Not necessarily a message, though. If you wanted to trade, now would be a wonderful time for it. I'm here just to buy the celestial pearl of serenity. Sounds very nice, doesn't it? It does seem a nice good. thing to have. Pearls are nice. How, how, how we've missed you, Prince. Oh, yeah, I miss you guys, too. It's uh, quite dull being around people who don't really have a say in what they do. It must be pretty boring for you to just easily dominate people's minds without a challenge. I never challenged, or I never dominated any of your minds, so there was never a challenge, really. <laughs> Well, that was one time. 
<laughs> still, still wasn't very challenging, though. Yes. No. Yes. No. Maybe. <laughs> so, what were you going to trade for that celestial pearl? Uh, I've just called hard cash, actually. Hmm. Ruha's filled with it. Oh. And uh, I was hoping not to use this pearl necessarily, but uh, see if maybe you guys had an interest in it to, to trade with me. See, I'll buy this pearl, and then I'll give it to you in return for maybe some other magic items. Uh, wondering if you retrieve that in sensor, or, or sensor, rather, or Talmac. Uh, you can roll sense motive. Anyone can. Everyone roll sense motive. I don't know what this simulacrum stats are. The prince doesn't have good sense motive anyways. Uh, Mosca uh, senses that the prince might not have actually, either the prince is lying, or a simulacrum doesn't know, or the prince didn't know which Talmic artifact his mercenaries retrieved. Hmm. The the prince might on uh, the simulacrum might honestly not know, but it's kind it's of hard to tell. Or did I know. assume wrong about what item your mercenaries were able to get? Your pawns. Sorry. You are lucky you didn't kill my pawn. Hey, I was very specific about that in the letter. Blame those mercenaries. So, the sensor? Would it be up for trade? And everyone's quiet for him. <laughs> We've actually okay. already put something up as collateral here for the pearl. Oh. Are you interested in a bidding war? Perhaps. That will go interesting for you. If we lose, we're still benefiting the Empire. How's that? Oh, by costing this country money? Costing you know that the... Ruha money. The money funneled into this empire is still, you know. Also, we'll know exactly where they are. I suppose so. Though if uh, I go missing, don't expect that would go terribly well for you, right? You're already not here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm here. The real you isn't I'm here. Close. We're not That's after... such a hurtful thing to say. Come on. Okay. What <laughs> what would we, what would you like us to call you? Because you're not Ruhan. Uh, let's go with what's the name the prince really liked? Jimmy. You can call me Jimmy. Jimmy is becoming <laughs> something special right now. You're he's you're not worthy of the name Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, and you're not worthy to say who's worthy of the name Jimmy. You wanted him dead more than any of us. Yeah, Asian lady. Kind of red <laughs> dress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the prince did care about his about Jimmy. He kept on leading Jimmy to terrible places, but he did care about him. <laughs> it's a funny kind of love. Yeah. Tough One love. that none of you seem to have. <laughs> well, if you if you guys uh the auction <laughs> Ding 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 Ladies and gentle people Welcome to the auction at at 
a big bombastic sh sound. There is a there is a live orchestra. They start sh telling about some of the items that are coming out, but most of them are art pieces with no direct adventuring value. But finally, the best. The part that brought many of you here, we have obtained the actual, genuine Pearl of Serenity. Oh, they're starting with it. Uh, it's, it's not starting yet, but they're oh. effectively, it, it takes about 20 minutes for, like, 20, 30 minutes for a bunch of the lesser items to be sold, for the, uh, the announcer to hype people up. And then... The Pearl of Serenity is is brought out, and people ooh and ah over it. It is a pearl with gold uh, gold streaks through it, and even from here you can sense the even from here you can sense some of its, I guess, docile. It, it's just making. It's taking your aggressive impulses and sort of toning them down. Even from here, its power is noted. Hmm. It, it said, You will find on this here pearl the ability to cease conflicts and end wars. The power within your palm to shape the world in for the good of the Empire. Now, the starting bid is a hundred thousand gold, and it's already off. You see, he you see, like the little placard signs <laughs> just start raising, and said, "I have a hundred thousand. I have hundred fifty thousand. Hundred seventy seventy thousand." And he just starts. It is a relentless, nonstop word jumble. <laughs> from this auctioneer because I cannot do it justice. It starts inching up towards 250,000 within the first fervored two minutes of bidding. You see that there are a lot of people in disguises. Try evident you don't know which groups they're part of. This whole auction house is designed for a certain amount of anonymity for the various people involved. Uh, as the bidding starts to go up, Mazga's gestures to Onan and mm -hmm. Lalara to step outside for a second. Okay. Then once they're out of earshot, he asks... Should we stop him from bidding? That seems like... A... Um, Actually, Onan hasn't been part of this conversation. She's been silent the whole thing. She has no idea what's going on. Oh. Oh. He shoes away the monkey for a second. He wants okay. to have a bidding yeah, war. Yeah, for right now. Right. Yes. He wants to have a bidding war. Should we stop him from bidding? Or should we try to make him use as much of his money as possible? He wants the pearl. Mm. But we also mm. want the pearl because that seems like a important thing for the Empire, or at least the Anvil, to have. If there were any other person, I'd tell you that we don't know if the prince is better off than, the, uh, than whoever is getting the money from this, but it's the prince. I don't want Ruha to get any more money than it has. Well, so, yeah, being able to stop... him dry. Drain as much. But being able to stop wars is also, you know... Oh, you mean... The power yeah. of the pearl is worth more than the money. It's worth more than anyone here will probably bid for it. But no one has that much. Could we stop him? Is that... You would... what? Well, Do we have something that's stopping us from stopping him like that? If we took away his placard and you put that monkey on him, he can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> What's... Also, isn't he technically... He's not even real. Breaking the yeah, he isn't breaking the rules for. 
Not a... But we could also hmm. remove him. But I mean, if he is a if he, if he is a copy of someone who's a criminal, then it doesn't. Right, he's still a criminal. Sense. He's a he's a tool of a criminal, regardless. Right. So do we? The question isn't how can we stop him. It's do we or do we not stop him? Because we can take him out right in now. The middle of the auction. I feel like we should. If he ended up with a pearl, there's a little chance we're gonna like easily get it back, and he's definitely gonna outbid us. So the only advantage would be costing like his country money. I think we should. The only thing is that the prince is a really good bluffer. I think he does. That's also, if if we don't have enough money, if there's another bidder that we can't get, our only chance of getting this pearl is to trade something to him. If this this pearl is on a large scale, a lot more important than the scale of luck or the pearl of luck, we need to make that trade. Hmm. Yeah, there is an unknown of who else is out there looking for the pearl, and they might be what? able to outbid. Can't be more outbid people. us, but not outbid the prince. Right. Right. We might need the prince's money to get this object at all. Hmm. I don't want to take that risk. We could. Trade the Pearl of Luck, though, as you said. Well, if he doesn't get it, because we took him away. It would be bad blood with the auction house, and which would cause us problems if we, you know... If something else came up, yeah. If It would also be making a scene. Right. Well, no, no, bad a... blood if he won and then we attacked him. And took it for some. Yes. So we'd have to remove him now or not. We don't need to remove him forcibly if we want that pearl. We're willing to give him the other pearl. But do we want him to have a pearl? Why don't we just give the pearl to the auction house at that point? I don't want Ruha to gain anything out of this. Mm. Well, I don't know. I don't know if there's much more threat to us. In the, in the, the pearl audience. of serenity is more dangerous in his hands than the pearl of luck. Right, but if we just pearl of luck just makes him hard. If we hard just deal. but if we sell the pearl of luck to the auction house to outbid anyone else. Oh, do we have time for that? I'm sure it's they can make right an now. exception. We'll have to be quick. Right, let's get back in there. Okay. <laughs> Okay, as you guys get back in there, you see 300,000 going for 300,000. Okay, I have a 310,000. And it just, it, it's starting to creep up. The prince still hasn't lifted his sign. He's waiting for it to slow down. You know, it's a lot of work to lift it up. Uh, it finally gets to 350,000, and you can tell that there's now... It's getting really financially onerous <laughs> for people to continue. Uh, your your aide, who doesn't actually... Do, does the Paladin of the Order of the Anvil actually know that you guys have more than nope. what he's contributed? Mm -mm. Not yet. Okay, so are you guys going to make a bid? It seems like it's starting to stall out in 350000 how much do we have total? We have 350,000 from Talmec, and then we have 175,000 cash. Okay. And then we could go even more than that with the other pearl. Right. If we traded the pearl of luck, that would probably be 400,000, if not more. Wow, that's not worth it. That's two artifacts for one, guys. But this artifact seems important like one of the better ones of the set but the most dangerous in terms of broad uh, effect mm, okay so uh bidding uh honestly it's up to Lolara because she's the one who's using the pro uh, right now yeah that's fair i suppose uh the bidding gets up to four hundred thousand. someone because you guys haven't set your bid in uh, we'll do 410. Mazgus will raise his okay. thingy. 
So, like, people are thinking, like, 400000 that's what it sold for the last time. Like, people are thinking that's about how it is. You raise the sign, 410. 410! We have a 410! Do we have a higher bidder? The prince raises a sign. 420! We have 420! Blaze it! <laughs> 420! <laughs> Can we do 421? Can we just go up by any? Oh god. <laughs> That's gonna get us nowhere fast. I don't care. Okay, do 421. Do it. Just four tire his arm. <laughs> and the four prince raises a 475. <laughs> 475! And people like gasp at that number. <laughs> 475! I have a 475! And then someone in the back, you just hear a deep voice, 500,000. And you guys look, and Tiamos, it, it appears like it's just like a heavy set, like, half-orc. Tiamos looks, uh, actually, Tiamos, because you have true sight. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we have just to make sure everyone's aware we have 575 in donated cash and collateral okay so 575 it's close and then if need be if need be the pearl. depending on how much beyond that we need to go right like it might get the other one. okay so the orc says 500,000 the auctioneer says 500,000 do we have more than 500,000 the prince looks at you expectantly like Moscus looks back. I I look at Moscus. Moscus looks and... back. Valara <laughs> looks at herself in a mirror. Valara <laughs> looks scared. back. Mun <laughs> looks at the monkey. <laughs> the monkey looks back. <laughs> uh, what was Tamos gonna say? Tamos says. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, what? The prince raises his thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, what? I, uh, Tiamos waves Mazgus out of earshot. Okay. The half-orc is Cadaltrix. <laughs> Mazgus starts to <laughs> laugh, and it's one of the few times you've ever heard him <laughs> laugh. <laughs> he, he, Mazgus sits back Sits back down, <laughs> looks over at the orc, and and waves a little bit. The orc does not pretends not to notice. And then he ra Moscas raises up five seventy five. <laughs> the, the auction house goes, goes silent, and you see the half orc look up to you and do, do like a real. <laughs> <laughs> When can you outbid a dragon? Or at least challenge him? Come on! <laughs> Does the prince move? No, uh, the prince goes up to 600. 600? And then 625! <laughs> says the orc. <laughs> and he's now glaring at the prince. <laughs> It says 650 and throws a pretzel in the direction of the. <laughs> Who's got oh, more money, Ruha or a dragon? <laughs> That's a question for the DM, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I, I need a minute to think about who honestly has the greater reserves. I'll be back. I'll be getting some water. Okay. All right, myself. let's take a quick minute break. All right. Come on, Ruhan. Are you going to take that? Are you going to take that? Come on, Ice Ruhan. You're as cold as ice. <laughs> I, raise, I raise my paddle. One million gold. I would kill you. <laughs> the auction house would kill him for you. Probably. <laughs> Okay. 
Do I have people? Yeah. I'm here. I think six stuck on. Okay, probably getting ice cream or something. So I thought that I didn't realize the auction would actually take so long, but I'm mm -hmm. glad. It seems like people are enjoying this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good Alex. <laughs> You think he wouldn't want to go do this? Yeah, you know, it makes sense. He probably wants to lord it over the anvil. Oh, God, you're right. <laughs> oh, and Hill will definitely take a trade of Pearl of Luck for the Pearl of Serenity if we wanted to. Oh, yes. That's his Pearl. That is, yeah, that's his Pearl. Mm hmm. If we wanted to, because basically it's trading that pearl for all the uh, dragon stuff Valara could need. So that's Valara's dragon. Mm -hmm. And we might get to keep the pearl. No! <laughs> or wait, yeah. Uh, is is Snake back yet? No, he's okay. Rum he's rummaging around the okay. kitchen. That that's understandable. Uh, so Moscus, because the because the secret's kind of out. Don't need to bring you into a separate channel. You you feel you feel a slight presence like. At the side of your mind, it's not trying to force its way in. You're you trying just to Muscus? It's not Muscus. Uh, Timos. Timos. Yeah. Okay. Timos, and you just hear, you hear Cadalatrix's voice. He's using telepathy. Mm -hmm. He's just going, "Add your bid to mine. We can outbid the stupid prince. I'm not letting him take away my prize." <laughs> okay. Very well. <laughs> Now, to be fair, it's we've never actually really discussed D and D doesn't have good fundamental values about how much a country is worth or how much liquid assets a country has, especially one in a high magic game. And so, I honestly don't know how to resolve a situation between the, effectively the two NPC factions that I've created. Good job. Other than if you guys add your bid to Cadalatrix's bid, you'll you'll likely succeed. That's hmm. is at this point the prince the prince will just target something else that's cheaper. Well, hmm. I don't know how we'd add our bid to... Is that something that normally happens? Oh, no, no. He's asking tel like telepathy for you to add your... F oh, effectively sorry, I wasn't here. ...lend your, some of yeah. your funding to him so that oh, the prince... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. How, uh, we'll telepathy him and say, not past 175, please, but we can go to 575 if you really need us to. Okay, the the prince and the orc named Cadalatrix start a bit start bidding. The numbers are eye watering to the regular <laughs> to the regular person. Uh, eventually, it just ends with with Cadalatrix saying nine hundred thousand. And the Prince Simulacrum kind of just shrugging. <laughs> the auctioneer goes, going once, going twice, sold to, to auction member 34. They, they use the numbers, not names, as a way of anonymity. Well, tough luck, Ruhan. Maybe next year? 
Oh, well, this was a delighting evening. I, uh, I'm quite happy. Sense motive, he's not. <laughs> I don't think anyone needs to sense motive. <laughs> Is there anything else you might want to trade for? Mm, it won't be long now, but I'm working on something you might like. Oh. Does it involve golems? Mm, in the process of getting it, yes. Ah. Interesting. Are you paying a visit to a pillar? No. Sense motive. <laughs> he seems uncertain because he honestly doesn't know. <laughs> I don't actually know what my bluff check would be to roll, so I don't know if you know that. Uh, I will do a GM roll. It's not as good as Ruhan's. No, but it's still still fucking good. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm half the level, but so this is a level six Ruhan basically. Or, you know, seven or eight, or I don't know what level he got boosted to for. Oh! Purposes. Okay, so what exactly are you trying to sense motive on? Like his general hunch? Uh, if he's lying? If he's lying. Like, Mazkis was trying to see if he could get information to say, like, what he's actually doing with the golems. And if they're digging uh, something, maybe they're after those. The, the simulacrum is. Is pretend is doing a confidence, is like pretending to be confident. The simulacrum honestly doesn't know. Mm. Gotcha. And but you can sense that the simulacrum is definitively frustrated by <laughs> losing the auction. <laughs> Although you sense that it's it's not like epileptically mad. It's just kind of mad. Mm -hmm. So what happens to you? He was you hoping he could at least get you to put up the Pearl of Luck so that he would just bid on it next day. Mm. Not today. Not today. So, uh... The, the auction ends with that eye-watering figure as the half-orc then goes into the side rooms to collect his prize and process the payment. I guess we'll have to skirt over there and assist with the payment. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys go over, and you're about to be stopped, and then the owner comes by and says, They're allowed in. And everyone, uh, are sorry, gonna let the simulacrum of Ru, Ruhan go. What do you guys think? No, 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 no. We shouldn't. No. Destroy it. Mm, I'm like in broad daylight. I'm on the border, personally. You, on one hand, there. On one one hand, Mazgus still actually holds in his heart that Ruhan might not be a piece of shit and is actually trying to do something <laughs> good out of all this. But mm -hmm. on so keeping okay relations with him might be a good idea. He's not an outright enemy of this group at the very least. It's it's tough. Hmm. Now <laughs> it might not be as uh As forgiving. <laughs> now, what are you guys? How are you taking this conversation? Are you like out in the hall or something? I'd probably go, like, to, off to the side, but watch the door. The simulacrum would be leaving through. Okay. The, they're competent people. Like, our people are supposed yeah, to be competent. Uh, just assume any time you're off to the side or having a sidebar, you are inside Onan's disrupted silence bubble oh. inside a silence bubble. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's really neat. Yeah, I know, right? I don't think we can let this simulacrum walk free but it hasn't it doesn't have anything of value on it and the prince might one day have something we actually want there's no we gain nothing from destroying it petty revenge is not worth it and this is on it this is where player agency takes takes over you, you guys decide 
You want to vote? Are you gonna like talk to him, ask what he's doing at the Capitol before you decide to murder this poor innocent simulacrum? I mean, do they li live forever? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, regardless. Uh, Mazka's votes to not kill it. Yeah, duration instantaneous. It lasts forever. Okay, so I have one mo I have the Mazka's vote to not. Onan doesn't want to break any laws and isn't going to <laughs> go against the. Uh... Like, it's still kind of a person. She doesn't. She's very torn. She's just going to sort of go with the flow. Okay. Kong's I mean, if, it, if it were the prince... That would be different. Well, I want. I would like to treat it as if it were the prince. But it is it's not... No, we, it is not... It's an the, extension no, of him. No, it is not the prince. Mm -mm. It's the extension of him. So I vote for that, yes, we do capture it. Okay. I have a vote for capture, a vote, two votes for not capture. And this is where I need... Everybody. Everybody. I, I think that even a, even a small manifestation of the prince is dangerous to just let walk around. We need to capture him. What are you gonna do? Like a capture and release? <laughs> you bring him, <laughs> put put him next to the Rouhani board, and be like, "Don't you come back to our lands, you wanted <laughs> criminal? Even if you're only a simulacrum." And give him a funny number. Granted, this letting him go free could help us capture the real Ruha. How? By gaining his trust. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not trying to. I don't want to burn a bridge because it may come and helpful. It may help later, but killing it or capturing it or otherwise doesn't get us anything. It nets nothing, except ill will from Ruhan. I mean, he's not just here for the auction. You could probably gather a spell was expensive. You could have sent a messenger. But you don't know what. Right. But you could ask. We could ask. We could also ask without hurting him. Yeah. Yeah. But we need to know what we're going to do after we ask. Or decide after you know all the information? Okay. I see that I have paralyzed you again with tough decisions. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Lawrence? I imagine it's not good to, like, upset Prince. I honestly trust, like, leaving one of his agents just to, like, have free reign. Do they only last for... 12 hours? No, and, and no they hour. last forever. They, they last forever. However, as far as the prince's agents, I'm sure they're everywhere anyway. All he has to do, yeah. he has almost unlimited mind control over pretty much anybody. It's a problem. I don't think this is a from... <laughs> Man, I hate it when we have an opponent who just can mind control fucks. I mean, oh, man, I've I hate been... fighting Kilgrave. It's the worst. <laughs> I've been... <laughs> I've been mind controlled from the start. Was there yep. anything that we could... Like, I don't think he can cause any more harm. I mean, well, but. I know, I, it's not easy. The... No, is it? The, the prince is now standing in the doorway, just watching you, like eating those pretzels. <laughs> this thing has... This thing has like a little nervous like, looking. Right? To Ruha. So, not like a special one, just like he can probably know what it knows or something. Anyway. Uh, he... No, it actually has no special 
telepathy. Oh. Well, unless added. unless he's added it as a separate spell effect. Like if he had dominated the simulacra, dominate person that he no. any, poten any potential we could use him as an eye, like. I mean, it would be fantastic for scrying. I mean, it's something. It was a possession of the prince, effectively. I mean, I could just have my scrying orb follow it. Oh, that'd be smart. Mm -hmm. See, now we're thinking. Okay. No, that's an idea. And that's the least violent, like. Moz gets, gets behind that idea. Because then that way we can keep an eye on it. And Perfect. It yeah. I can I can get behind that idea. Okay, so you guys just kind of. Forget. The only gonna... problem is get... if he sees it, if he can detect it. That's the only problem. Well, you'll find out pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the simulacrum in his existential crisis will like see it as as its equal. Be like, hey, buddy. You know, we're just two lost, <laughs> scrying things in the, in this cold world. This crazy world. No one treats us as people. <laughs> we'll just be best friends forever. So we're it's gonna with, be a buddy cop spinoff. We good with that idea? Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's, good. So... let's talk with him and just basically say, "Hey, what you doing? What are you buying? What are you selling? <laughs> you plan on staying in the capital long? That kind of thing." Mm-hmm. Call me. So call me. At the moment I'm not buying or selling, as uh, as we've seen, as you've insured. But I am staying in the capital for quite a while now. That's the plan, anyways. Uh, something happened to the previous ambassador to Ruha, so. Hmm. Yes, honey. <laughs> that, taking that, that role. That was Prince Ruha. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I guess I'm taking that role up. It sounds like this whole world is on the brink of civil war, which is going to be a problem. I'm hoping that with the combined forces of Ruhan and whoever is top of the food chain right now, we can make a war so unappetizing for the other sides that nothing happens. What do you mean by a civil war? Hmm? Well, they're the generals that have been eyeing each other's throats for quite a while now. Have you all picked sides? I'd love to hear it. It tells you so much about one another to know what, uh, who you value. Who you follow to war. There are currently three major war generals. Each one of you would know them. General Yang, General Haruzen, and General Zen. Oh yeah, we talked about this one time. Each one of them, uh, some of your characters have been approached by them. To see, kind of figuring out loyalties. Was I? I don't remember. Uh, no. Nope. Uh, if you guys were part of the military structure, so it'd be like Alexander's and Onun's characters. Mm. The other one, you guys just know that if anyone's going to have, if the if the emperor ever moves against the military leaders, they're that would be a surefire trigger for civil war. So the what is the prince is saying is what the prince's simulacrum is saying is not out an out there idea. Well, if your aim is to actually stop a civil war. We would want to cooperate with you. I'm glad to hear it. I guess I should specify my mission is. I don't know what my goal is, but uh, maybe I'll take up music or dance or something, you know, really see what's out there. You know, find my way in this strange world I find myself in. But yes, for a full time job, that's uh, probably what I'll be doing. Thanks for asking. What? Really... <laughs> the princess, the, the princess Simulacrum is going to do soul searching through dance. <laughs> is really that's, the, that's his mission. The too long like, didn't read. That's his aim that he's going for, but his like 
job is to uh to go through and try and keep this empire from falling apart too much. Let's do a sense motive on that. Cuz even if he doesn't he has to know what his job is in order to even attempt to do it. He might be lied to yeah. about what he's attempting to do. Is actually going to do what he thinks it does. Uh, <laughs> it honestly appears like that is his, his job is to try to prevent civil war hmm. in the greater empire, or at least reduce it. <laughs> Trying to prevent it outright is not really a job for a simulacrum. But he can help. Well, all right. Anyone else have any questions? Oh, meta-wise, all it would take is an order from the real prince, and that would change on a dime. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, nothing the prince could order him to do would change his soul-searching. So, you know, that's... You've got that going for you. <laughs> well... If you need some suggestions for some dance teachers, I know a few. Okay, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I'll definitely hit you up on Okay. <laughs> and the, we'll... the simulacrum kind of starts walking out. My orb follows, I guess. <laughs> you, you have two orbs, so you send one of the orbs to follow. Wait, does the simulacrum notice? I need this for roleplay. Uh, it is invisible, coated with lead, so detect magic doesn't actually detect it. And see invisibility might not actually work on it. Okay, then yeah. This True seeing like, would. And it doesn't actually make any noise. It's actually like a really... As long as he doesn't accidentally hit it in one of his dance routines. Yeah. You're good. Yeah, it would... Nah. So... The wallflower... Uh, you, you guys, uh, guys get to, you, you guys go to Kedalatri, effectively the, the side room with Kedalatrix. He says, I'm gonna need what you said you'd give me. Fine. And the, the anvils man is like, why are we? giving money to this man and the orc just takes a look at the takes a look at the guy does oh, yeah. a smile that is far that is extremely warm and generous and a hint of mocking and goes don't worry we're working for the same lady ultimately so that means I have to give up my, my pearl no nope, you don't nope. have to Oh. You guys just, uh, it's the 175,000. Oh. oh, in liquid. Oh, we don't even have to give up the bracer. Oh. Dang. No, he just asked for your support. But it also means that effectively you guys helped, but that the pearl's going to the anvil. Wait, are you actually going to give the group the $150,000 for the bracer? Uh, we didn't sell it technically. We just had we it could. available to sell. It's still that worth that value. Uh, <laughs> yes, but I think that's a bad uh, yes. Idea. <laughs> well, you guys would also be losing the bracer and the uh... for five hundred eighty thousand. I can think of some better things than beach shape. <laughs> For five hundred. But uh, you also don't know if that's actually how it would end up if that's the final price it would end up at uh that's true another quick vote i say oh. we'd get it back <laughs> yeah uh, may as well okay we another day especially did. because you don't know if it's actually useful in controlling talmix amulet Ooh. also valid yeah let's keep that. Are, are we allowed to take it back i don't see why yeah. not he, he just yeah. said it's collateral but you guys didn't end up winning the bid okay so he, he kind of looks, uh, as you guys, like, uh, Auction Master Hao Zong says, So, 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 uh, should I set a new bargain, uh, auction date for the, for the bracers? Uh, 
we'll actually be taking it back since we weren't able to get what we came here for. Uh, you see the disappointment on Hao Zong's face. Because you know, selling some, doing an auction for something like that would only raise the prestige. But a bar, a bargain is a bargain. And so he goes and he gives it, uh, he takes it, he brings it back to his office, takes it out of the vault, gives it to you, allows you to verify that it is what it is. Because he can verify it, but he wants you to verify it as well. Should I? It would be a spellcraft check. Okay. I mean, I could also put it on and try to become a bear. <laughs> That'd be nice. I'm a bear on a bird, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if this is the same. It is the same. He hasn't tried to swindle you out of it. Motherfucking pterodactyl. <laughs> you could actually turn into one. Yeah. Wait, what? Wild shape for? Wild shape what? It, it would be beast shape. Beast shape. In which beast shape? Or is that the like the best or something? Uh, so druid. Let's look. It be as it would be wild shape of a druid of your level. Ah, okay. So at twelfth level, you can use the. Uh, you can turn into a huge elemental, huge plant. Uh. A, or a huge or diminutive animal. You can turn can into you a lot of spells things. when you're like that. Ah, uh, yes. Well, the the bracers would allow you to st still cast spells. Wait, does that turn? Interesting. I could turn. I'd turn into a T-Rex. <laughs> a huge T-Rex. That'd be pretty strong, actually. With tiny arms and a big hand. Does yeah. Does that mean I could turn Akane into a hippogriff? <laughs> uh, into a griffin? Griffin, yeah, sorry, griffin. Uh, yes. Wow. That'd be broken as shit. <laughs> That'd be a ludicrous damage increase for that round. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it, it didn't occur to me. Look, th this is literally, uh, but it would do up to Akane's hit dice. Is what it could turn into. Gotcha. So whoever, whoever wields the power, it depends on their hit dice. Mm. So technically, the monkey could actually go up to level twelve, but your bird would likely be nine, eight, eight or nine eight. hit dice. Yeah. Ah. So the monkey is the right choice. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> actually, hey, Shakti sure. has that raven. Yeah, Chakti's raven could turn into a huge elemental. Oh, jeez. Oh, my god. You wouldn't get the health, though. It'd be very weak. It, it wouldn't get the health. That is the problem there. Familiars uh, are still... Uh... They'd look strong, but they'd die in, like, a hit. <laughs> I mean... They could look scary, though. Now, uh... So, because the auction took up more time than I was expecting, which is perfectly fine because you guys did a lot of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. For next time, what I have planned is you going to the Forest of Rochot for to get the last piece of the armor of the Dragon Emperor. Okay. But not the last piece, the second last piece. Yeah. That, that, like is, that. That, was your, that was the plan for like two weeks ago. Yeah. So, uh, okay. I guess we don't have any reason. There's nothing pressing. There's no timed quests currently, other than the major ones. Uh, I like this, just waiting quests, really. So I guess that ship is still floating around. And... Yeah, I think the, the ship is still floating honest, around. Honestly, could we go after the Pearl of Balance after the forest? Or the ship? Is the Let me ask. Is... And we'll know answers for the next week. Yeah. yeah we'll do both Alara and us asking. So I can toss you the staff after. You can ask the same thing. <laughs> so you guys just divine, divine, divine. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask, will the Pearl of Balance, uh, I guess, still be untouched a week from the, now? The, I can already answer any question about the Pearl. Don't know. Your div your level that level of divination spell is insufficient to find out stuff about. Okay, will the, the ship 
Well, the ship, the, if it's at the island, well, the ship reach and the name of the island would be whatever. Okay. Uh, and before, uh, what is the percentage chance? Uh, would be 182, or sorry, 82 out of 100. Okay. And so the answer will be the ship. Uh, so what is the exact question? Uh, will the ship touch down at the aisle within the next, I'm going to call it three days for the, uh, the armor, our quest to get it and get back down here. Okay. So that the pearl of balance, will the pearl of balance be found? I know, will a ship touch down on that island? No, the metal ship. Uh, the answer is on the third day. On the third day. And then hand All it to right, Lara. Get Lara, Lara to confirm. Okay. You can ask any other question you want. Like, you know, should I ask TMOS out? You can ask that. <laughs> I'm wearing a fetching dress. <laughs> I mean, quite a don't you pour into that, okay? Don't yuck any yums here. I'm not. No kink shaming. Okay. So, uh, Lalar's answer comes back the same. Nice. On the third day. All right. All right. We can actually see the rolls, so. <laughs> We know it's real. Or he did we know it's true. two rolls in front of us and two rolls without a C. Oh, shit. Okay. Hmm. Anyway, let's go for the... Check. Why don't we go for the forest and then jump down there? And, yeah. Hop okay. Down there and uh, the, the forest would be... Uh... So let's see. We're at the capital right now? You guys are at the capital. Okay. 850 to that. The, uh, before, you, uh, before you go there, you might want to jump to Zing Selin and speak with... Well, actually, that depends on what Shakti tells the rest of the group. Are you guys going to go straight for the armor or are you going to check in with the capital of the forest of Roshol? Do we know... The general area of the island? You know the general area, but you don't actually know... You don't really have detailed maps. You don't really know... You kind of know like a 50 by 50 mile radius, but that's... Or 50 by 50 mile square. But that's kind of... That's a lot of territory. Especially with forests and trees. Yeah. Um, I suggest to the group that we go back to my uh, hometown, <laughs> the capital of the Forest of Rosha. Get a tour guide. Sounds good. good. Yeah. Works for me. Okay. <clears throat> Great. So, that's what we're going to be doing next time. I hope you guys enjoyed our little auction house mm -hmm. and ethical questions about simulacrums oh god 